Okay. Okay, so this week, uh, Parsha Shoftim is a very interesting mitzvah, which I think is no to very, very much to our lives. One would think that it's not, because it's not a mitzvah that is no to the majority of Israel, the majority of the Jewish people. In fact, it's a mitzvah that is no only to one person, to one individual. And you would think, why is it no to me? What are the chances? Or let's just, let's be honest, there's no chances almost, almost, that it, this mitzvah will be no to us. But yet, I think it's something that is, the concept of it is very no to each and every one of us. And that's the mitzvah that is unique and special to the king, to Melech and Am Yisrael. It says in Perak Yud Zayin, Ki tavoi la'aretz asher Hashem alokech anosel l'chav yirishta v'yashavta ba, you're going to go into Eretz Yisrael, and you're going to say, Asima alai melech kechol agoyim asher svivotam. I want to have a king like all the other nations. Som tasim alecha melech asher yivchar Hashem alokech abo, mikarev achech. You have a mitzvah to have a king, a king that Hashem will anoint, that Hashem will pick, and we know that Hashem, uh, Shmuel Anavi was told to pick Shaul Amelech and then was told to pick David Amelech. Hashem was the one who picked the Malchus Beis David. And there's a special mitzvah to have a king, and that king represents Am Yisrael. He unites Am Yisrael. He's the heart and soul of the Jewish people, and he aligns the Jewish people with their mission in this world, and he fights the battles of Am Yisrael in the world. This is what the Melech does. And there's a special mitzvah that the Melech has. Rak lo yarbelo susim. He's not allowed to have a lot of horses because then he's going to bring the nation back to Egypt. And he's not allowed to have a lot of wives because they might sway his heart and he's not supposed to have too much gold and silver. So there's three uh, unique commandments for the king. He's not allowed to have too many horses. Why? There's a because. That will lead him to go back to Egypt. He's not supposed to have too many wives because that might sway his heart. And he's not supposed to have too much gold and silver. And what's interesting, what's interesting is, is that this is, and, and it says, you shouldn't have too much gold and silver, levilti rum me'echav, so that he shouldn't have too much gaiva over his brothers. That's why he has the mitzvah to have a Sefer Torah. That what he should have is a Sefer Torah on his arm all of his life so that he should be a modest person. It's really... It's, that juggle, and if you read a little bit of Tanakh, the vast majority of the kings of Amisol were not successful in having that balance of having that anivus, of having the modesty of being the king, of being the monarch, of being the, the successful ruler that, you know, the ruler has the ability to, to kill if anybody's morid by Malchus. Um, the vast majority of the Jewish kings were not successful in, in creating that balance, and the first one actually to action to fall by this mitzvah is none other than Shlomo HaMelech. Shlomo HaMelech was the first one, again, he, he was the wisest of all men. He, he's, he's one of the greatest uh, kings that Am Yisrael has ever had. He is, the name is Shalom. He built the base of Mikdash, Shlomo, it's peace. It's, but we know that he fell in the challenge of having too many wives. And because he had too many wives, so they started to sway his heart. And they started to sway his heart. At the end, he, he lost his kingdom pretty much. And the kingdom was, was split by, by the, by, already by his children. And they, what's fascinating is that there's a Medrash rabbi in Parshas Va'era. says the Medrash, the paniti ani lirot chachma v'hololus v'sichus kima adam sheyavu achorei ha-melech es asher kvar aso. It's a pasuk in Shira Shir about Shlomo HaMelech, and says the Medrash, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave the mitzvos to Am Yisrael, he gave mitzvos asei, mitzvos lo sasei to a king, and then he said, you're not allowed to have too many horses, you're not allowed to have too many wives. What happened? There's a very famous Medrash. What happened with Shlomo HaMelech? Shlomo HaMelech says, uh, Ahmad, Shlomo HaMelech, v'hich kimal gzei shel HaKadosh Baruch Normally the Torah does not tell us what would be the outcome if we don't listen to the mitzvahs. But here the Torah says, if you have too many wives, so then the, you're going to sway your heart. Says Shlomo HaMelech, I'm going to be wiser than HaKadosh Baruch Why did Hashem say not to have too many wives? Because then they're going to sway our heart. But I'm going to have a lot of wives. V'lo yasu levavu. Ani arve v'lo yasu levavu. What happened? 
Amr Rav was saying, listen to this. This is fascinating. The rabbi said, Be'osa Shah, at that moment, also Yud Shebe'yarbe ve'nishtecha lifnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu ve'amra, ribona olamim, the Yud of Yarbe comes in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and it says, lo yarbe lo nashim, it starts with the letter Yud. The letter Yud comes in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and says, Master of the Universe, you said that not any letter could be erased from your Sefer Torah. And here comes Shlomo HaMelech, and he's erasing the letter Yud from the Sefer Torah. And says the Medrash, where did he erase the letter Yud? The letter Yud was erased by the word, there's one of our matriarchs, that her name used to end with a Yud. And then it was taken away. And it no longer ends with a Yud, but rather ends with a Hey. Who am I referring to? I'm referring to Sarah. Sarah, I mean, in the beginning, her name was Sarai with a Yud. And the Yud was erased. Because of Shlomo HaMelech, the Yud was erased from the name of Sarai. And says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I will not let Shlomo and a thousand people like Shlomo to even erase the Kuto Shal Yud, the tip of your Yud. And that's why Hashem restored the letter Yud in the name Yehoshua. It used to be Hoshea Binun, and then it became Yehoshua. Moshe Rabbeinu gives the letter Yud to Hoshea, and he becomes Yehoshua. Ya Yatzil Chamatzis Meraglin, and the letter Yud comes back. This is the words of the Medrash. What's going on? What is the Medrash trying to tell us in this interesting Medrash that you have a mitzvah not to have too many wives? This week's parsh. Shlomo Amalek says, I'm going to be a wise, I'm going to be smarter than a Kodesh Baruch. I'm going to have wives and it won't affect me. Comes the letter Yud. Why specifically the letter Yud? Why is it bothered by, by that Shlomo Amalek is, is having too many wives and he's saying, oh, it's not going to happen to me. And, and what does Sarah have to do with it that she loses the letter Yud? And then Yoshua, he's the one who regains the letter Yud. What's going on? What's going on? It's, it's, it's an, uh, an amazing amazing concept. So we have to understand the combination of the letter Yud and the letter He and how it affects our personal lives. And since this is a week that I'm here to celebrate a special simcha and a wedding, I want to also suggest how this affects every married life as well. And that's why I'm saying that this mitzvah and this medrash is going to shed light not just on the mitzvah of the king, but an, on our personal life and on our mission in life. And I think it all is symbolized by the letter Yud that was taken away from Sarai and was given, and in, instead was exchanged with the letter He and the letter Yud that was given to Hoshea Binun and that was put right in front of the letter He of Hoshea, and it became Yehoshua, and I think there's a lot to be learned over there. Let's take it one step at a time. See, the word, there's many names to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You could call HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kel, you could call HaKadosh Baruch Hu Elohim, you could call HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yudke Vavke, you could call HaKadosh Baruch Hu Makom, Hamakom Yenachem Eschem, you could call HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yud He, Ka. Where do we find that the, the first time in its strength, it's not the first time in Tanakh, but in its strength, you find it actually in Yeshaya. It's a letter to Chizkiyahu, the king of Yehuda. Chizkiyahu, the king of Yehuda, was a righteous king. He knew that one of his grandchildren is going to be a Russia. In fact, going, going to be a very big Russia, Ovid Avodazara, Bimachti Asarabi. And he didn't want to have such a grandchild. So therefore, he did not want to get married. And he didn't get married because he saw in his Ruach HaKodesh, his Yehua HaMelech was one of the, the most righteous of the kings. And the Navi comes up to him and tells him, HaKodesh Baruch Hu said, you're going to die. You're going to die early because you didn't listen to the mitzvah of Hashem and you refused to get married. And his understood the Musr and he accepted the Musr and he asked for Mechila and the Navi came back to him and said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu accepted your Mechila and he added 15 years to your life. Because Geo got married, had children and actually his grandson was 
a big Russia who is Machdias Arab. But it says the Navi Yishayo in Perek Lamed Ches, Michtav lechizkiyo melech Yehuda bechol so vayichim michol yo. Chizkiyo was very, very sick. He was going to die because he wasn't listening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ani Amarti says Chizkiyo, I said, Bedamich, Bedamei, Yemai, Elecha, Besharei Sheo, Pukadeti, Yeser, Shno, Sam, Gil, lose the rest of the days of my life. Amarti, and therefore listen to what Chizkiyo HaMelech says, and this is going to be the, the root to understand this, this uh, medrash says Chizkiyo Amelch Amarti lo ere ya ya beretz achaim lo abit adam od im yoshvei chad. Chizkiyo Amelch says, I'm going to die, and since I'm going to die, lo ere ya, I am not going to be able to see Hakadosh Baruch Hu in this world. Ya beretz achaim Hashem in the land of the living. This is Paraklam and Ches, Pasuk Tes, and Pasuk Yud Aleph. I'm not going to, I don't understand, Chizkiyo Amelf was going to die. And if he's going to die, it means that he's, he's not going to be able to do any mitzvah. He's not going to be able to say Yud Kevavki. He's not going to be able to say Kel. He's not going to be able to say anything. But yet he says, I'm not going to be able to say Lo Ere Ya. I won't be able to see Yud Hey. What does that mean? There's something in the name of Akadosh Baruch Hu that is Yud Hey that is very powerful, that is actually symbolized in every single marriage as well. And I'm going to get into that as well, right? Because what am I called? I'm called an Ish. And what are women, all the women here on this, on this call, and, and my wife, they're called Isha. And says the Gemara in Sota Daf Yud Zayin, Darish Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva learned out, Ish ve'isha zachu shechina b'neim lo zachu eisho chlasa. If ish ve'isha zachu, a man and a woman who marry, they will have shechina, the heavenly presence amongst them. If not, then there is going to be fire. Says Rashi, shechina b'neim sharei chalak eshmo v'shichno b'neim yud be'ish ve'hei be'isha. Says Rashi, listen to the energy of a marriage. The man carries the letter yud, and the woman carries the letter hey, and together they have the shame of Hashem which is yud Hey, And that's the shame of Hashem that Chizkiyo was nervous that he's not going to have because he didn't want to get married. Amarti lo ya, but ish ve'isha zachu, that's when they are zochet to have the shame Hashem in their name. Lo zachu, says Rashi, eisho chlasen. If you take out the yud and the hey from ish and from isha, what do you have left? You have just the letters ish, just the letter fire. Why is it though that the Ish Isha carry the name of Yud and He. They could carry the name of Kel, right? Isha will be Isha with an Aleph at the end, and Ish will be Eshel with an Aleph at the end, and together you have the name Kel. It's one of the names of HaKadosh Baruch. Why is it specifically that it needs to be the name Yud He? There's something special about the name Yud and hey, together, that that's the man, and that's the woman, and that's what Chizkiyo Amel was nervous that he's not going to be able to say, Amarti lo I won't be able to see Hashem in Eretz Achaim, in the land of the living. I, I won't be able to have the life of Yud and hey. I think this is the importance, and this is going to be the root to understand what's going on over here in Shlomo Amel. The letter Yud and hey represent our mission in this world, and they represent what our tafkid in this world is, and how we could accomplish that tafkid specifically through getting married, and specifically through combining energies and powers that different people have in this world. And that is that our job and our mission in this world is to bring spirituality, the knowledge of Hashem, into the physicality, into the physical world, and to incorporate it into our physical life so that we are able to elevate it so that we live a spiritual, meaningful existence in the physical world and not just uh, an animalistic type of getting through life, but rather a life full of meaning, full of values, full of purpose. That is the purpose of this world. That is, in fact, what it means to shine Hashem's light in this world, is when we live our life like HaKadosh Baruch we emulate Him. We follow those values. We live a holy life. That's the mission. Now, the letters that represent that is the letter Yud and the letter He. The letter Yud represents the future. 
represents spirituality. It's the only letter in the Aleph base that floats. It's not on the line. The Yud is elevated up above. And the letter Yud, if you put it in front of any word in the Hebrew alphabet, in the Hebrew words, it turns it into the future. And, and any verb, ye uh, leich, yavo, yagia, ve roe, right? It's, it's all words, it's about to be Rosh Chodesh. Anything that you want to turn into the future, you put a yud in the beginning, it turns it into future. The, the Gemara says, how do I know tchias amesim minay? It says the Gemara, az yashir Moshe. Moshe will sing. It's not az shar Moshe. Az Yashir represents the future, represents something spiritual. The letter that represents physicality, that represents the present, that represents this world, is the letter He. Yosef says, He lachem zera. Ha lachem anya. It's right here. It's He. It's right in front of us. The letter He represents the physical world. In fact, the, the Mekubalim that explain the letters, they say that a letter He in the Sefer Torah is built of a Dalid. The Dalid represents the Arba Kanfos Arts, the four corners of the world. And inside of it is an upside down Yud. We're supposed to bring that spirituality into the physicality. And that's, how, that's what the letter He represents. It's the combination of Yud and the He together. That's what the Gemara in Menachos, Dav Chav Teslam and Beis says, a Pasuk that we say every single day at the end of our davening in Uvalitzion, we say, Ki Beka, Hashem Tzur Olamim. Because in the name of Hashem that is called Ka, yud He, Tzur Olamim, He is the rock of the worlds. What worlds are we talking about? The Gemara over there discusses Olam Haze, Olam Haba, Olam Haze, Nivra Behe, and Olam Haba, Nivra Beyud. The Gemara concludes over there that the world to come, the spiritual world, is more in the letter Yud, and Olam Haze is in the letter He, and that's why it says Ki Beka Hashem Tzur Olamim. Rabbi Akiva is coming to tell us that the connection between a man and a woman is actually to bring those two things together. And a man's job by nature is his tafkid, what he needs to bring into this world is more of that spirituality. He needs to be focused in Torah learning and in mitzvahs because if he doesn't, he may not survive because but his personal nature is to be very, I would say more animalistic. But yet, what, by being engaged in the spiritual activity and his mission to the families to bring Torah learning into the home and to bring spirituality into the home. But how do you make it relevant? How do you make it practical? A lot of guys could be sitting and learning Torah their whole entire life. But who is the one who actually brings and transfers the Torah to the next generation? Shema b'ni musar avicha ve'al titosh toras imecha. The Gemara and Yivamo says, somebody who's Shari without an Isha, he could be sitting and learning in Kola, and he could be a Talmud Chacham, and he could be giving Shiurim. But a Shari below Isha, Shari below Torah. He doesn't actually have Torah until he is able to build that connection with somebody who represents the letter He, who by nature is more practical, who is able to have two feet on the ground and to manage everything that is going around the house, that is able to manage everything that is going around in the community, that is able to think about every single child, what he needs and what she needs and about the school year that is coming up and about what everything, she's able to take all of those values and make them real in our personal lives here. That's why it says, Shema b'ni musar avicha v'al tito a person could be a big time but without that relationship to the practical world, He's Shari below Torah. He doesn't even have the Torah to its fullest degree. And that's why it's the women. They're the ones who are mechanech, the next generation. They're the ones who are able to carry it over to bring the yesodos, the, the foundations. You need that combination of the father, of the mother. And they are the two shutfin. They are the partners with HaKadosh Baruch, who's the third partner, who's able to create the next generation of children who will go in the way of combining the spiritual and the physical world. In, and in a certain way, this is the essence of what our life is all about. Our life and our success in our life is how much can we incorporate Hashem, godliness, meaning, 
values into our life, into our community, into the world. That's really our purpose. That's what we're here for, right? It's, you know, we speak a lot about values. They're values that are, that are not Jewish even values, right? Oh, but no, we're talking about God-given values. And when I speak about holiness, right, it doesn't, there's no laws of how a person needs to eat outside of Judaism, what to eat, what not to eat, how to eat, the blessings before. Those, all of those laws, they come and they represent Kedusha. Kedusha means that we are on a higher level than animals. It even means that we're on a higher level than other human beings. It means that we understand that we're created from HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. Achelik Elokam Imal is, is really in our, that's a neshama shenasata bitehorahi. It's pure. And that's a part of who I am. That is my identity. And therefore, the way I eat is not going to be like an animal. The way I eat is going to be, I eat certain things at certain times and there are restrictions and there are times in between and I make a blessing before and I elevate the food to be a high level. It's the same thing with marital relationships. It's, it's something that is kedusha, something that is holy. It's not just an animalistic instinct and it's not just to procreate. It's, it's really, it's, everything is based out of kedusha. And that is something that is fascinating, fascinating about Judaism. And that is our mission of, cre- of connecting the Yud and the Hay together. And it gets symbolized in, in a wedding, which is the Yud and the Hay coming together. Now, when that happens, there's a very strong responsibility specifically on the women. Because the women are the bridge to the practical and relevant world. You know, we're, in our day, it's like, oh, men and women, we're all the same and this. And it's true. There are... I think that was a positive part of the revolution that is happening is that men are more in touch with their feminine side and women are more in touch with other sides as well. But still, let not that fool us that our roles and our natural place is very defined. And especially in Judaism, it is defined. And we have a mission to bring in that spirituality and women are by nature much more practical and are able to to raise the children in a more realistic type of way. But with that ability, there's a risk. The Medr says that if it wasn't for Chava, then Adam Arishon would not have sinned. Adam Arishon was, was created by Hashem himself and purely 100% from Hashem. And therefore, he was so pure, the snake would not have been able to lure him into sin. However, Chava was one step removed, was created from Adam, from Hashem. And therefore, it's one step removed. And therefore, and she's more practical, more connected. To, and therefore, she was the bridge to lure Adam. And therefore, they both fell down. However, the same measure says that it's Sarah Imenu that is able to save Avram Avin. That if it wasn't for Sarah, who was practical and understood what was going on in the house with Ishmael and with Yitzchak, Avram Avinu would not have sent Ishmael away and Yitzchak would not have been Yitzchak. Yitzchak would not have been Yitzchak. So it was Sarah, the same measure says that if you're Zoha, your wife will build you up. And if you're not Zoha, she might bring you down. Because again, she's that bridge to the, whether to make spirituality in our life or whether to bring her husband down. And I think that's Pshat with the letter Yud, leaving Sarai and getting the letter He instead and going into Yoshua. And this is why the letter Yud was the letter that was complaining about Shlomo HaMelech that was destroying it. It was ruining it. Why? Because what did Shlomo HaMelech say? Shlomo HaMelech said, the Torah says, if you have too many wives, it will affect the future. It will, it will make you sway your heart. And Shlomo HaMelech says, I'm a wise person. It won't happen to me. It won't happen to me. It won't affect me. The Rabbanim are saying, don't have internet in your home without a filter. And people are saying, no, I can do it. It's not going to affect me. It won't affect me. But the Torah is saying that it will affect, and eventually it does affect. Right? We we are sometimes smarter. The Chachamim say, don't have yichud. Don't, right? And a person says, no, I can do it. It's not very professional over here. Everything's very professional. And then eventually we hear of stories that the yichud is what caused terrible things to happen. A lot of times we have these gedarim, these fences around that are here to protect us. And then people think they're going to be smarter and it doesn't affect them. And then they might end up missing, 
missing something. And therefore, it's that, that, that was the challenge that Shlomo HaMelech was facing. Shlomo HaMelech said that that future won't happen to me. So the letter Yud, which represents the future, which also represents spirituality, says Shlomo HaMelech is undermining me. He's undermining what the Torah said, that it will affect our future and it will affect our spirituality. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, no, it won't happen. What does that mean? The letter Yud was, was erased. Who was it erased from? It was erased from Sarai. Sarai was actually, the Gemara tells us, was on a higher level of Nevuah than Avram Avinu. And that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Avram Avinu, Kol asher tomer lecha sara shema bekola. You should listen to her. She was on a higher level of Nevuah. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I'm going to make sure that it won't happen because sometimes men think that they're going to be better and smarter and I'm going to tell, and I'm going to give, and, and it's sort of like kivyochel in the DNA of every Jewish mother coming from the first Jewish mother, Sarah Imenu, that she's, she was the letter Yud, but she gets the message and the theme of the letter Hey, that she's in charge of that spiritual bridge to make sure that her husband stays spiritual, but yet that she's able to bring spirituality into the physical world and to protect him from not necessarily drowning in that physical world. So it's that bridge, and that's what Sarah represents, like it says in that Medrash, that Sarah is that bridge that lifted her husband up, that lifted Avram Avinu up, and was able to save him, was able to save the next generation. And then Moshe Rabbeinu, when it's time for Am Yisrael to join in and to go into Eretz Yisrael, and Eretz Yisrael is the land of physicality, Right, the Miraglim didn't want to go in because they wanted to stay just in the in the midbar. They wanted to stay just in the clouds of glory. They didn't want to go into a place where you have to work, you have to work. Right? They didn't want to be there. But we know that life is supposed to be a life where you do work. You work the land, and you give mitzvos that are tluyas baaretz, and you're able to to give that to different people. That's what the that's what this life is all about. Moshe Rabbeinu, who knew that Yeshua was going on this mission. He understood that there is something very, very dangerous about this mission. And therefore, he said, Yoshua, your name starts with the letter Hey. We're going into a physical land. The Miraglim want to stay just in a spiritual realm. You, we need to go into Eretz Yisrael, but you take that Yud with you. And you are going to be sort of, he was the first king of the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael. It wasn't an official crowning of a king, but he was the leader of the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael, you take that Yud with you, which represents spirituality, which represents the mission of all of the men who are coming in with you, and make sure to write the Torah down on, on 11 different stones, and make sure you, you right when you cross the, the yard, in and to make sure to give the mission of spirituality to Am Yisrael when they enter the land of Eretz Yisrael. This is what this, the mitzvah of lo yar below susim, the lo yar below nashim of a king, speaks to us, and I would say even more specifically speaks to us in the land of Eretz Yisrael, or anybody who is thinking of why should I even be coming to Eretz Yisrael, right? We've been speaking about this so much. I, I don't normally speak a lot about Eretz Yisrael, but I feel more and more, and I get chizik from Rabbi Wein whenever I speak to him. And being here in America, I get more and more of this chizik, and people are coming up to me and are telling me, oh, I heard your, your, your session about uh, making Aliyah, and I heard about this, and and they're asking me for, and, and people are telling me that they decided to, to move to Eretz Yisrael, and it's, and it's very encouraging. Eretz Yisrael is the land, ki beka Hashem tzura ulamin, is the, is the land where we connect the Yud and the He together. It's the land where we live a physical life, where we have startups, where you could come to Eretz Yisrael and you could be, fit, you could be successful, financially successful and stable. It's true, Eretz, Mitzrayim, America is, you have the Nile. In a certain way, it's easier. In Eretz Yisrael, you could also be successful, in a way more successful, but you need to have a relationship with the Kodesh Baruch That was last week's parish. You have to turn your eyes up to, to the heaven two weeks ago, right? You have to turn your, you have to have that stronger relationship with the Kodesh Baruch and then you will be even more successful in Eretz Yisrael than you could be anywhere else in the world. And it's, th that is the combination of the letter Yud and He. That is the mission of the Melech when he comes into Eretz Yisrael is to combine those two things. That was the mission of Yoshua to show that this is life in Eretz Yisrael, combining the Yud and the Hey. This is the mission of our life, living in Eretz Yisrael or with our striving to come and live that type of life. 
Yes, you can have a spiritual life in America. But when you live it in Eretz Yisrael, so much more meaningful, so much more impactful. The vast majority of you on this call have made that decision to live a more spiritual and meaningful life, a holier life in Eretz Yisrael. That's what our shul is all about. That's what our community is all about. And, and that's what Shlomo Amelch, in a certain way, was challenging that a little bit. The Torah is telling the Melech, you need to lead that life in Eretz Yisrael. And when Shlomo Amelch challenged it a little bit on his level, so the Yud came complaining. And the Yud said, well, he's taking out the spirituality. He's saying, oh, we could still do this and that. And the Torah is saying, no, you can't do this and that. You need to be able to have that combination. And the ultimate way is, is obviously, that's why a husband needs to get married to a wife and they're able to build it together. Some people are not Zoha, or some people, you know, they go through their life and they don't have that. So then they have to do it as much as they can. But that's why you need a partnership always with other people. That's the call of a community. A community is able to bring all the different people together and to allow us to have a spiritual life in a physical world, and that gives us the most amount of satisfaction and the most amount of feeling full with our lives and happy with our lives and with our children and with our grandchildren because we feel like we're living what life should be like. And that's my blessing to all of us, that we should all be zoche to live life to the fullest, to live life. Imagine a person goes through life and says, you know what, I'm living life to the way it should be. And when a person feels that way, it's an unbelievable feeling. It's an unbelievable seepuk. And it takes work. It takes constant work. I'm have an estimate, it takes work of dedicating time to learn and dedicating time daily for, for spiritual growth and for being doing self-reflection and for understanding and for being real with myself, being real with my surroundings and, and being able to translate it into my daily life. And that's why we have this amazing partnership. That's why I was inspired by this week's parsha, by the wedding that is coming up, the Ufruf and the Shabbat Shabbat Brachas, to try to connect all of these things together. It was a real, real schus for me to share with you these words. And Alavai, we should be zochet to, you know, to take, to take to heart this lesson and to live that type of life in Eretz Yisrael, together with Achenu Kolbeis Yisrael. Big schus.